Welcome, my friends, to another video. My name is Irvin, also known as Kobuman. Today's topic is about email formatting and is incredibly important to learn this when you're communicating issues to a third party that has access to a certain system that you do not. The reason that is important is because if you don't provide the correct information right away, the issue is just going to take longer to resolve and this is production impacting and this looks bad so what are some of the things that we need to include in our communication with other parties we will go over here in a in a second but let me just tell you that i kind of got this idea from my previous video when i talked about ping command and a situation in which you may have to contact somebody else that's outside of your company or somebody that's within your company but you don't have direct access to that system and now you have to reach out to somebody else that you do not know. So if you want to check out that video, there will be a link right here. And also this idea for these videos uh, came from my website, which is CosmicNova.com. And the article name is Top 20 Desktop Support Interview Questions and Answers. All right, guys, that is that that is all for the introduction of this video. Now let's get to the important part of this video and that is communication this is incredibly important to pull off perfectly the first time that you are communicating something to somebody so that way the issue can get resolved really fast and then you look good not just you but you your group also and your manager and then you know this could potentially get you a raise anytime you do a good job and make sure that you're professional about it, it always gives you a chance to get a raise all right, so let's have it in a situation where the website is down. So let's pretend that my website is down, CosmicNova.com, and now people can't access it, but they need to use it for everyday use. Let's just pretend that. So what do you do? You don't have access to CosmicNova.com. So now you have to contact the tech support or the webmaster at CosmicNova.com. So the first thing we need to find is obviously their email. We need to have their contact. And once we find that, we come into a situation where we have to contact them. So if you can't reach them by the phone or that you do reach them by the phone and suddenly they're like, okay, well, we need more information. Well, the best way to communicate that is via email in this format. So let's pretend that their email address is third party support contact at cosmicnovo.com which is by the way fictional email address it doesn't exist so don't don't send the emails to that <laughs> anyways let's pretend that this is the contact email so the next thing we need to uh, add on there is the subject line of course however make sure you cc your manager or any other team members that you work with so that way know that they know that you are communicating this information to this company through this support and of course that they know that you are working this kind of tells them okay i'm going to add my manager at kobuman ah, kobuman.com so that way he knows that i'm also working on this you know what i mean you want to tell them that you're working. This is job security for you. You know what I mean? This is one of those things that people never really talk about. You know, we want job security. It's incredibly important too. It's just as it's important to resolve this issue in a timely manner, so there's no production impact, I want to also make sure that my job is secure as well. Why not take credit for something that I'm doing? You know, very simple to understand. And the next thing is subject line, also incredibly important. The uh, reason you want a good subject line is so that it gets attention to the of the person or the team that you're contacting right away. So can you imagine people getting hundreds of emails a day and they see so many emails a day that all of them just kind of look the same. So they are like, oh, okay, this is another FYI email. This is another email that's just like everybody gets this and that. Well, we want a good subject line that catches their eyes. So we're going to say cosmic novo.com is down so now whenever this email pops up in their inbox they're like oh that looks important so they're going to grab that and they're going to be like okay this is something important i need to fix this right away which is great simple enough 
we want the subject line to be incredibly important and eye-catching eye-catching because this is a big issue anyways if you've never contacted these people before you want to have a good professional introduction and regardless to whether i've contacted this person before or this group before i always use i always do this i always uh, have a professional introduction regardless because i don't know just because i talked to bob at third party support contact just because i talked to bob last time doesn't mean that Bob is going to work on this email. Maybe Joe is going to work on this email next time. So I'm always going to have the same introduction. And it's very simple. I'm just going to say hello. And I'm going to say my name is Irvin with PC support at, and then you specify this location. You know, city, state, uh, country. If you do tech support outside of country for somebody else. You know, that's fine too. You just want to kind of specify who you are, where you at, and why you would want to contact them, you know? And then you can, you know, fill this in, fill in the blank basically in this part of it. So the next line we want is an important line as well. We want to say, we have received a report that cosmicnovo.com is either not working down or whatever the issue is for all users so if this is extreme case scenario where the whole website is down it's not just like part of the website this the whole website is down so we want to specify all users now let's go back to the we part the reason you want to say we is because this implies that you work as part of a team and then more than one person, as in you, is aware of this issue. So yes, I said my name is Irvin with PC support at this location, so that's just me. I am working on this, that's all that means. However, we, as in team that I work for, have received a report. That means it makes it more urgent. So. The reason I'm the way I'm looking at it right now is from a psychological point of view to um, encourage urgency. And as you see here, this kind of a theme started from the top here from the subject line. This is incredibly important. You're professional. However, there's a sense of urgency in a very professional manner and you're right to the point. There is no you know, there's no beating around the bush, as they say. So this is incredibly important to have. And this is how I format my emails every time I contact somebody that is uh, that is a third party and they I, and I need their assistance. So let's go further down. What are some of the things we need before uh, we send this email? Well, we need a lot of information. This is what they typically ask. How many users? So now you don't type this in in the email but this is what they would ask so you you wouldn't type this in but you would say as an answer to this question you would say all users so you can kind of use this as a template again make sure you don't have the actual question there so now the question that they would ask is how many users and you say all users boom all users are affected by this issue okay and i do know that i've stated this earlier as well but we're just going down the line in case it just kind of going down the line of the things that they would normally ask about and they would say what is the link used so you know this is definitely important um in this case is a website so we would just type in cosmicnovo.com now you want you can be specific you can type in http forward slash forward slash cosmicnovo.com however it's https so this is another thing we need to provide as well now we're going to remove the question itself now we have is the link they use as in users they 
Now, of course, if this is like some kind of a application or a software issue, you know, they may not la they may not ask for the link, you know, obviously, because it's not a website. If it's something else that they might ask, which, for example, which version of the software are you using, right? They can ask that. And then you can simply reply, we use version, for example, 7.0. 5.9 of this software, right? So that's in case it's some kind of a software issue, but we're gonna go back to our situational uh, thing where the website is down. So I'm going to remove this so it doesn't confuse you. So now we're back at this situation where just the website is down, but the other thing was just in case it was an app issue, application issue, if you will. So the next thing they might ask is, when did this issue start? This is what they would ask. And the reason they would ask this is so that they can look at the log files on their end. They can look at the log files and kind of help them narrow down what the issue is much quicker. So think about this. The website goes down, let's say, at 8 a.m. So this is what I'm going to type in. The issue was reported at 8 a.m. And then you might want to specify time zone. So I'm just going to put down Eastern time for an example. And then since we have that information, I'm going to remove the question of it as part of our template. And then we're going to just say it happened at 8 a.m. Eastern time. So now they can go in and look at the logs from 8 a.m. Eastern time and then see what happened and it will help them resolve this issue much quicker when they have more information. Think about it. It's kind of similar to whenever you do, you know, just regular PC support, you know, you know user reports that there's something wrong with their computer and they're very vague about it, well, you need more information to resolve it, just the same as the webmaster or the third-party contact for this CosmicNovo.com will also need that information as well. So these are some of the very basic things that are a must when it comes to reporting an issue like this. We have three different things that they can look at. We can say that everybody's affected. We can see that this is the link. We can tell them this is the link that they use and they can see, well, okay, well, that's a correct link, right? So it's not a, a, an issue where it's a, just a wrong link because that happens sometimes. They have to ask this type of stuff. And then we know that the issue was reported at 8 a.m. That's when the issue started. Now they can look at the log files. So what else can they ask? Well, they can ask a bunch of different things, but this might be something that in, comes up in a follow-up email. For example, can you provide example IP addresses where, I'm sorry, off the PCs that use this website so this is what they might say in a reply you know but we want to wait for them to actually ask this because if if it's an issue where they can't when it becomes more complicated they can't figure out why it doesn't work because they they might might say simply well it works from our end but it doesn't work from your end so this could imply that there is some kind of a firewall issue that something happened on the firewall or a proxy for your business and so for some reason you can't reach cosmicnova.com they may reply with this and say can you provide the example ip addresses of the pcs that use this website so that way from their end they can see if they can reach these these computers and then see if it's an, a firewall issue or not they may also reply and say can you provide 
user or users to test with via remote desktop. So the reason they would want this is obviously so they can test the changes that they have or kind of have a look at this issue from a user point of view. Now you might want to be careful with this if it's a you know outside of company, but if it's within the company, this is perfectly fine. But if it's outside of company, then this would be a security breach. So you don't want to, you know, let you know third party support contact name Bob from CosmicNova.com access your company system. I mean, you know, it's up to you, but technically it's a security breach. So but if it's a, if it's a, somebody that works within your company that supports this website, then yeah, that's perfectly fine. They work for your company. It should be perfectly fine, you know. But they might ask for that. But typically in this situation, they would resolve the issue on their end unless it's a firewall type of uh, situation, in which case they may start to reach out to, you know, whoever the, uh, you know, whoever controls that network whoever has access to the domain controller, whoever has access to the proxy, because it could be just a proxy issue too. We don't know. It could be that one of the load balancers on the proxy is down and they need to fix it so that it can provide proper routing and proper access to the external websites for, in this example, cosmicnovo.com. And then of course, let me finish up our initial email you can just say thank you and then you can just sign off you know type in your name and then i don't know your signature might have more contact like you know your email at you know whatever it is and you know phone number for example i don't know you know zero 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 <laughs> and your title, of course, you know, you guys know how to set, you know, set up your uh, signature. And here I'm going to type in my signature, business systems analyst. And uh, <laughs> that's, that's an example of, of, of uh, my signature uh, that I use in my email, of course with the real information, this is all fake information. But that's how you guys do it. You know, at this point, you just kind of wait for them to reply, to contact you, they might call you, they might reply, they might send you a message over the instant messenger, who knows, but this is an example of how you would format the email and the information that you might want to provide to the support for this type of business. I hope you find this video educational and helpful. I uh, will be making more videos like this. I do, you know, YouTube as like a more of a hobby than anything else. So I don't release videos too often. But when I do, um, you know, if you want to see the notification, don't forget to subscribe and hit that notification bell. But I do try to release at least four videos a month, at least one one a week whenever uh, I have free time as as you know here I work as business systems analyst on my main job but I do enjoy a lot to make these type of videos for you guys all right thank you so much for watching please share with friends have a good day bye bye